Hello and welcome to a, a new Lila game. While I was covering games from the Premier Division and the final of the TCC event, over at chess.com, uh, CCC 10 bonus 3 event was going on, where a very strong Lila was present, uh, a Terminator class Lila. Now, if you remember, I already covered a couple of games of uh, Terminators. Terminator has a, a bigger neural net than what Leela used until now in competitions, but it is exclusively trained on Leela games, and because it's bigger, it's also a bit slower in uh, evaluation, but also much, much stronger. And this Leela present here in this tournament played some really, really amazing games. This uh, today's game is, is one of those. This event has uh, finished already and after 200 rounds, here's the cross table of the event. As we can see, Leela managed to, uh, to win this with a 3 points advantage over Stockfish and a 7 points advantage ahead of Lelenstein. So quite strong performance. So let's see today's game. We have a triangle Slav and uh, let me flip the board. Leela was black. So the game started with d4 and now after d5 we have c4 and e6, the queen's gambit declined, knight f3 and now c6. And this is the end of the book and we have a triangle slav on the board and uh, many openings can develop from, uh, from this setup. Black's last move, c6, is not geared towards uh, taking back on d5 if white takes. Because the exchange slav is not so exciting for black, the position is symmetrical and um, white's advantage of the first move is, uh, is bigger than in an asymmetrical position. So there's only one open file, the C file, which is shared and usually white tries to take advantage of it and black tries to respond. So white is the one who, who dictates the tempo here and black uh, tries to counter it. It is much more exciting for black to take back here with the e-pawn and get into this famous Karsbad structure. I won't get into the details of the structure now, but I will just say that because of um, the asymmetrical position, white has the semi-open c file and the c file square to work with, black has d4 square and the semi-open e file, and black has much more chances for a counterattack uh, against the white king. So the c6 move has an, another purpose and that is that in some variations black can win this pawn on c4 and then hang on to it with, uh, with b5. For example, even if white plays here knight c3, black can already take here and after e3 trying to win back this pawn, black can play b5 and black has an extra pawn at least temporarily. So after c6, white has to, to make a choice here. Allow black to win a pawn, but play actively by developing the bishop, or defend this pawn with e3. Allow this bishop to take back here, but then, um, then the dog square bishop is blocked in temporarily. So this is white's dilemma. He has to, uh, to make a decision. So it's very interesting to see now how Houdini prefers to handle this position and here he preferred to play g3 so he's giving up the pawn on c4 and is hoping for counter chances on this diagonal lila now continued with taking the pawn bishop g2 and now b5 since uh, black won a pawn he, he needs to somehow uh, hang on to it otherwise uh, white will pick up this pawn and then black has nothing to show for the weakened structure, white will still get uh, the pressure on this diagonal. So black has to stick to this pawn and hope for the best, try to resist white's pressure and uh, in, in the end game win with the extra pawn. So we have b5 and now after castles, knight f6, we have a very typical position on the board which can arise from many openings. In our case, we arrived here after a queen's uh, gambit declined opening, but this can also, but uh, we can get to this opening also from uh, Slav and also from the Catalan. So this is a quite a typical structure 
and here usually white tries to uh, to make this bishop work and put a lot of pressure on this diagonal and he he does that by pressurizing these queenside pawns here um, with moves like a4 and knight e5 and also b3 so all these moves are putting pressure on these pawns and white can start either with knight e5 or a4 but in this case houdini preferred to start with b3 now here black can't allow white to take on c4 for example play something like bishop d6 or bishop e7 because then after pawn takes and pawn takes black has uh, three isolated pawns here you know, on the queen side and uh, white can just play something like queen c2 or knight a3 or something and proceed on on picking up these uh, isolated pawns and white is better so black has to actually take on b3 and now after queen takes on b3 we have a novelty lila played here a novelty usually the game continues from here with bishop b7 defending the c6 pawn and the rook and then white continues with knight c3 and then after bishop e7 with knight e5 and white puts pressure on these pawns this way in this game though instead of bishop b7 lila played bishop d6 and this is a novelty hasn't been played before and it's a quite strong move it uh, allows a very quick castling here for black and the point is that now after 95 attacking this pawn twice lila won't take out this knight with the bishop that would be a bad idea because uh, this di diagonal becomes very very weak and um, after pawn takes and uh, knight d5 not e4 that would be a bad move because then just the knight goes away and the bishop is blocked in behind these pawns that would be good for black but white has here this very very annoying bishop a3 not allowing black to castle and white would be much better in this position so bishop takes on d6 not good lila was planning here to castle short and just give up this pawn on c6 and after knight takes knight takes and bishop takes she would have rook b8 defending this pawn uh, the pawn is not hanging because of the bishop takes a6 trapped the bishop and black just has a, a two to one majority here on the on the queen side and uh, and can push those pawns and black is better for example bishop b2 queen b6 queen f3 and now a5 and these pawns are rolling black is fine in this position so instead of knight e5 houdini preferred to attack the pawn on uh, the knight on f6 with bishop g5 and now we have castles rook d1 and a5 lila is expanding on the queen side and with tempo since a4 uh, will attack the queen we have knight d2 threatening knight e4 and ruining black's queen's uh, black's king side so we have first a4 pushing the queen and then h6 bishop takes queen takes and now knight e4 attacking both the queen and the bishop but in the in the absence of white's uh, dark squared bishop the dark squares are are not quite that weak in black's camp we now have knight e5 and here the bishop has to make a decision defend this pawn from b7 or d7 uh, on b7 this pawn would be pinned to the bishop so lila preferred to play bishop d7 here it's not like she's afraid of um, ex exchanging the knight for the bishop since uh, the bishop is the worst piece on the board houdini continued with rook c1 putting more pressure rook c8 and now e3 and rook a7 getting the rook away from uh, from this dangerous diagonal now in an ideal world lila would love to to somehow push c5 and uh, get rid of her weakness on c6 but this is uh, a far-fetched dream at this point in order to make c5 work she would need to play a3 or something and push this queen away from this diagonal the queen is defending the knight and only then c5 could happen when the pawn wouldn't be able to take because the knight is attacked but houdini just completely ruled any c5 out with knight d3 the knight is guarding both of these squares so there won't be any break anytime soon we have a3 though still attacking the queen queen b3 and now bishop e8 the bishop is uh, removed from the d file we have knight c5 now occupying that very nice square 
knight d7 and here we have f4 ruling out any kind of e5 idea but no problem the knight now goes to b6 and wants to come to c4 which would be a dream square for the knight houdini continued with bishop e4 his idea is to play bishop c2 and then queen d3 and uh, mate on h7 somehow but lila stopped that with king aj and after bishop c2 she blocked the diagonal with f5 we have queen d3 still and now knight c4 finally the knight arrived to his dream square queen e2 bishop f7 now that uh, the pressure was removed from uh, the c pawn there's no bishop attacking it and also the knight blocks the c file there's no more pressure on on c6 so the bishop goes on defending the other weakness the e6 pawn we have queen f2 rook b8 and lila is ready to push up this pawn we have h3 bishop g8 now bishop b1 and now knight b2 attacking the rook and after rook e1 we have knight a4 hoping to exchange the knights on a4 when uh, after b takes on a4 this rook could uh, get into b2 with big threats but of course houdini didn't exchange the knights he played knight d3 and now we have b4 lila is pushing those pawns she wants b3 we have rook c4 b3 and this is already a, a critical position taking on b3 wouldn't be so great because after rook b3 the b file is open and lila would have ideas like <clears throat> uh, rook b2 and a2 if uh, this knight is not here so uh, instead of taking on b3 houdini preferred to counter attack with knight e5 he's attacking now this pawn on c6 and here b takes on a2 would actually only uh, lead to a draw because now after bishop takes rook b2 looks dangerous but uh, white can counter attack with rook c6 and exchanging the queens doesn't really help lila to promote this pawn and after something like queen b8 white can play rook c2 and white has a very good control uh, of the a2 square so this pawn won't go anywhere anytime soon and if black pushes the agenda with knight c3 trying to um, to win over the a2 square and push the pawn, well then after rook takes on b2 and queen takes white has an unavoidable forced draw here pause the video if you would like to to find the forced perpetual here for white so b takes on a2 only leads to a draw so instead of that lila played a, a weird looking move knight b6 but it's a very very strong move it not only attacks the rook but it's also attacking the c4 square itself so that after rook c6 the queen can now go to b4 and the rook can't attack it from c4 because the square is guarded by the knight and from b4 this queen is attacking this rook limiting white's options for example a takes on b3 would already lose for white after a2 if the bishop takes and rook takes the queen would be overloaded so this is not possible for white after queen b4 we have g4 lila is trying to to make this bishop work somehow open the diagonal and allow some checks with the knight trying to get a perpetual but uh, lila here challenged the knight and after knight g6 check king h7 we have now g takes on f5 hoping for pawn takes and then after bishop takes white would get his uh, his draw thanks to uh, thanks to these checks with the bishop and the knight however lila didn't recapture the pawn instead she took now on a2 forcing the bishop to take a decision take the pawn or guard f5 if the bishop would take on a2 then black would be winning after e takes on f5 uh, if the bishop gets exchanged then uh, white doesn't have a piece anymore to uh, to stop this pawn uh, the queen can't really stop it because of queen b2 and so on uh, the, the bishop is the only piece that can uh, stop this pawn from moving forward and if the bishops are exchanged of course black would be winning and there's, there's not possible after bishop after bishop a2 and uh, pawn takes uh, 
returning the bishop to b1 and hoping to take here is not possible because now the queen can take and after rook takes rook takes uh, king somewhere and a2 this pawn is promoting to a new queen and black wins so bishop takes on a2 is not possible houdini played bishop d3 maintaining the the bishop on this diagonal but now king queen b3 attacking the bishop bishop c2 and now queen b2 and Lila is already threatening to push this pawn in. For example, there's no time for f takes on e6 because now the bishop could take on e6. The bishop, of course, is immune because this pawn is uh, threatening to go in. And there's no perpetual in this position. After knight e7, the king uh, gets out. After knight g6, he has king g8 and then king f7 and black wins. So f takes on e6, not possible. Instead, we have queen f1 guarding the queening square. And now came knight f8, challenging the knight again. This time, the knight takes, rook takes, and now f takes on e6. But now we have king h8, bishop e4, and bishop h7 trying to exchange the bishops. f5, avoiding that. But after rook e7, Lila has some, uh, uh, some tactics up her sleeve. And uh, after king h1, she took on f5. Uh, bishop takes and now g6 regaining the piece and at this point they both agree that black is completely winning it's very difficult to stop these pawns and um, the only chance for white is uh, to get somehow a perpetual or something so here we have now rook c5 defending rook takes rook takes g takes on f5 and now queen takes on f5 threatening queen f8 check and then picking up the rook with check but we have rook g7 counterattacking and threatening mate on g2. So the queen goes back. And now we have king g8 guarding the f8 square. And rook c1 hoping to, to, to get in and get some checks. But now came queen b7 check, king h2, queen b8 check, king h1. And now queen a8 check, king h2, and now king h8. And e7 here by uh, Houdini. Hoping again that maybe the rook takes when after queen f6, white gets a perpetual again. Uh, rook g7, queen takes, king g8, queen e6, checking e7. This would only lead to a perpetual here. But instead of rook takes, Lila has check and then another check. And then she can pick up this pawn. We have now rook c8 check, rook back, rook takes, king takes. And now queen g2 check. And Houdini manages to win one of these pawns. But Lila has another one. And now after queen e3, black has a completely winning position. She just needs to avoid somehow a perpetual. We have queen c2, king g7, and now queen c7 check. King f6, queen c8. If the queen continues with the checks, then um, eventually this king uh, will be able to pick up the d4 pawn. And uh, instead of um, that check, Houdini prefer to play queen c8. Now pause the video again if you want to see why the pawn on d4 is not hanging. The game continued with h5, queen c5, cutting the king, attacking the pawn. We have queen e2 check and now a2. And this pawn is now very, very close to become a queen. Lila is threatening a check and then pushing the pawn in. So the only chance for Houdini now is a perpetual. And he starts checking with queen f8 check, king g6, queen d6 check, king f5, queen c5 check, king e4, and now queen c6 check, giving up this pawn, hoping for uh, more space for checking in view of a perpetual check. Queen b6 check, king e4, queen b7 check, king f4. And after some more checks, eventually the, the king ends up on h4. And there are no more checks, uh, no more good checks, rather. The only uh, check from this diagonal is on f6, but the queen is guarding that square. And uh, if uh, queen e1 check, then the king is picking up h3, and uh, Lila would be threatening queen g3 check, and then mate on g2. And there's nothing white can do here. Uh, if queen f1, then black just exchanges the queens and pushes in the pawn. And if queen e6 check, then black has queen g4 counter check again exchanging the queens and then pushing in the a pawn so queen e1 check doesn't work uh, houdini played here king g2 to defend the pawn 
but now is Lila's turn to give some checks and uh, here after king g1 we have queen e6 a very good move defending this pawn attacking this one but more importantly allowing the black king to hide now the black king wants to to come to h7 and then um, uh, if the white queen continues checking then this queen can block with a counter check on white's king for example queen d4 check king g5 queen d2 check king g6 queen c2 check king g7 queen c7 check and now to queen f7 is game over there's only one check available now but after king a7 there are no more checks after a check on uh, on uh, d3 or uh, c2 lila would have again a counter check and then uh, she would exchange the queens and win the and win uh, by promoting the a2 pawn so if king h2 happens then check check and getting the other queen and then uh, just block the checks and black wins so instead of queen d4 check here in this position houdini continued with king h2 and now we have queen d6 check king g2 and some more checks and uh, now the black king is hiding on d1 when there are no more checks available we have queen a7 controlling the queening square but now we have h4 queen a4 check and after some more checks the king is coming back and eventually will hide on uh, h6 check check and now the king goes to h6 and again there are no more good checks here for uh, for white and uh, even worse for houdini the queen can't control the queening square anymore lila is threatening either to push in the pawn or give a check and then pushing the pawn and both of uh, d1 and a1 cannot be controlled by the queen and the checking squares on uh, on d2 and c6 are also controlled by the queen the, the queen is in just in the perfect position so there's nothing to do here houdini played queen c3 but now came queen d1 check and lila promoted the a pawn we have some more checks but eventually the king will be able to hide uh, behind those two queens and uh, that will be it we have check and then some more checks and here now after king c5 there are no more checks available we have queen g2 but now lila just exchanges the queens and takes the, uh, the h1 and after that pushes in the a pawn promotes it to an all-important knight and then she gives up the knight and then she restricts the white king and uh, mates on g7 this was a very very nice game a masterpiece in the triangle slav by by lila with a very important novelty i would say with bishop d6 i would like to thank to rene de whale for his generous 50 euro contribution to my channel and of course i would also like to thank to adolf todor radu and guilherme for their contribution please subscribe and uh, check out some of the other videos thanks for watching and see you soon bye bye